Hey guys, after we announced the uh, new beta round for the Magic Uploader yesterday, I got quite a few questions about it. So I thought I'd take the chance today to just do a little video and talk a bit about the Magic Uploader, what it is, what it does, why you might want it, why you might not want it, and uh, answer some of the questions that came up yesterday. Um, so first up, this is it. This is what it looks like. It's a little box. It's got some hardware inside and basically just a single power port that's there. So you get a power supply with it and all you really need to do is plug it in. Um, it also comes with a special SD card that you put in your CPAP machine. It's called a Wi-Fi SD card. And what that does is it allows the Magic Uploader to talk to your CPAP machine and basically stream the data off that and send it directly to your SleepHQ account. So effectively, that's the whole point of this thing is it saves you from having to pull the SD card out of your CPAP machine, upload, connect it up to your computer, upload your files into SleepHQ and go through that whole upload process. If you've got a Magic Uploader, that will happen automatically. It's just gonna stream those files in as you're using the machine in real time. Uh, so really the benefit to it is that it just saves you from having to do that upload process. Um, the other thing is that the data is instantly available. So it means that you can wake up in the morning, take your CPAP mask off and turn on your smartphone and your data will already be there from your previous night. You'll be able to see your full high resolution flow rate graph, all of your other statistics, everything will just be there in the app ready to go for you every day as soon as you turn your machine off. Uh, so that's really what the machine, what the Magic Uploader is all about, just convenience. Um, you don't have to have one to use SleepHQ. You will always be able to upload your data for free manually just by dragging the files in. So uh, if you're happy doing that, then fantastic. I know for me, that's probably the most painful part of the process is having to remember to take my SD card out of the machine and drag the files across. And it's, it's, it's not my favorite thing to do with SleepHQ. So that was the genesis for the idea behind these was how do we just take that pain point away so that it's really easy. I can wake up, take my CPAP mask off and my data is just there and ready to go. So that's, that's why we decided we wanted to build this thing. Um, the reason why we called it the Magic Uploader was because when we were first developing it, Nick and I were standing here and I was wearing the CPAP mask and we were watching, I had it connected up to my CPAP machine and we were watching basically in real time my flow rate graph coming into my Sleep HQ account. So as I was breathing, as I was wearing the mask, it was coming into my Sleep HQ account and we could see the screen as we were refreshing it with my new data live in real time. And it felt pretty magical, the fact that my CPAP machine was over there and completely unconnected, just coming through this wireless Magic Uploader box, my data was just appearing in Sleep HQ. Um, it felt like a pretty magical kind of experience and something that was, that was pretty cool. Obviously, having your data coming in in real time is not super beneficial for most people because you're gonna be asleep while you're using your CPAP machine. So really the, the goal is just that as soon as you wake up, your data's there. You don't need to remember to upload it or do anything like that. It's just there when you wanna go in and check it, you've got every day of data in your account already without having missed anything along the way. Uh, it also means that if you're choosing to like share your data with a doctor or something like that, they've also got access to your data in real time and as soon as it's uploaded as well. So again, your doctor's not waiting on you to remember to, to upload from your SD card or anything like that. You're, you can just have your data instantly there and have your, your sleep doctor reviewing that whenever you know they're gonna be uh, online and looking at your, your data. Um, another question that came up yesterday was, I have my own hardware. So these things are under the hood there, what's called a Raspberry Pi. And a few people have asked the question, I've got a Raspberry Pi, um, can I make my own? And the answer is yes, absolutely. So um, when, we're, when we're selling these, uh, we're effectively selling the hardware for them. It's the, um, the SD card that it takes plus the Raspberry Pi. Um, if you want to build your own, if you have your own uh, Raspberry Pi and you've got the right Wi-Fi SD card or you want to go and buy a Wi-Fi SD card, yeah, absolutely. We're going to make the software available for free for anyone who wants to do that. Uh, there are a few extra considerations with open sourcing the software that runs on the Pi because we have to make sure that it is really, really secure if we're going to uh, open it up for everyone to use. So uh, that won't happen straight away. So we're going to release the, the paid version where you'll be able to buy it as a complete package. And so initially, basically, it's you buy it, it comes with everything that you need to get up and running. So it's got this thing, which is the Raspberry Pi in the box. It's got the SD card and the power supply that runs that all together. So that's, that's everything. 
And again, it makes it a little easier for us because obviously we have limited resources. It's really just me and Nick building Sleep HQ. And so we're working as fast as we can as, and as hard as we can on, on doing everything, but we, we can't be all things to all people. So what we're gonna do is have this available just as a package to begin with. Um, once that's done and established, one of the next things on, on my list of things to work on is the open source version of the software that powers the Pi. So uh, for the people that do have their own hardware and want to build their own, um, yes, we will be open sourcing it and you'll be able to do that. And along with that, another question that's come up a few times is people asking about an API for Sleep HQ because they want to be able to basically build their own version. They don't necessarily want our software, but they might have already built something to download the files off their CPAP machine remotely and they're looking for like an API endpoint to push their data up to. Uh, the answer to that one as well is yes, it's coming. Um, the, we're, we're using a private API to power the Magic Uploader right now. And again, it's private because it may change. We're still kind of in active development on what that API endpoint does and returns and how it all works. So that's the main reason why we haven't made it public just yet. Uh, but we will be making it public at some point in the future and it'll probably happen at the same time as we open source the software for this. So that way it means if you're technically minded and you're interested in doing that sort of stuff, then yeah, you could you can just Take the, uh, take the flash of the firmware for the Raspberry Pi, put it onto your own one and just copy the device effectively for free. Uh, or if you wanna actually build your own version of it, then again, we'll have the API open sourced, you'll be able to, well, uh, public, and you'll be able to experiment with it and build your own version of it if you want to. And again, I think one of the really cool things about Sleep HQ is that we have this data now available in the cloud that people can access their own data from. So that API, I can see us going forward, extending the API and making it more more extensive where you could potentially be polling for other types of data. You could be running your own analysis by hitting the Sleep HQ API, downloading that ver different versions of the data, analyzing it in your own way. Uh, you could basically build your own web front end for it if you really wanted to. So I think the API is gonna be really powerful if you're really into the kind of data science side of things and that's something that you wanna get into. Um, yeah, absolutely, we've got that coming because I, I think that's super exciting to open that up for people and say, hey, we want you to have access to your own data in a safe, secure way, and then allow you to manipulate it, um, analyze it, whatever you want to do. Uh, I think that's that's a really exciting sort of up and coming feature for Sleep HQ that we're, we're definitely looking to bring in at some point. Um, the other one is when when will they be sort of fully available? So obviously we're, we're still really beta testing these at the moment. Uh, this is gonna be our final round of beta testing that we've just started now. Um, these will be launched with the pro plan. So when the pro plan goes live in about six weeks time, uh, that will be the time that we'll also, we're planning to also uh, officially make these available. So uh, that's, that's the plan, you know, software development, sometimes things blow out a little bit, but it's been a long time coming. We're, I, I'm pretty confident that we're about six weeks away from having everything wrapped up for the pro plan and for these, especially with this final round of beta testing. I think this is, it gives us a good few weeks to really just nail out any final little things that are in there that are causing people issues. Uh, we can get it all wrapped up, launch these officially, and then we can start looking at things like, you know, open sourcing the software for them, doing the API. We've got a lot of other feature requests and things that people have been asking for, uh, other sorts of machines that we want to support. Uh, I know the DreamStation users want to be able to use these as well. Uh, so that's definitely one of the things that, uh, that we'll be looking at as well. Uh, and BMC machines, BMC keeps coming up. Um, we've got a whole bunch of stuff coming down the pipe with BMC. We just, um, we just need, more me and Nick's here to, to actually do the stuff because it's, uh, it's hard work, it takes a long time and yeah, we're, we're going as hard on it as we can. So uh, we'll keep you updated, we'll let you know how we're all progressing, but um, yeah, for now I just want to take the chance to, to thank everyone for the, um, for the big response yesterday, it was pretty overwhelming, we got a lot of emails about the, about the, uh, the beta test for the Magic Uploader. If you didn't get an email, I'm really sorry. Um, we, yeah, we, we've only we've only got very limited supply of them right now because we're we're aiming for that big launch in six weeks' time. So we're just keeping it fairly small for this stage. Um, but to the, for the people that did get in first, thank you very much. Really appreciate the support, and yeah, looking forward to uh, to your feedback, getting to work with you guys while we we do this final uh, final round of beta testing. All right, guys, I think that's everything for me today. I'll uh, I'll catch you all soon.